Noel. Noel, baby girl, I, I don't know what's going on here. Baby girl, I need you to get the back home. I, uh, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. You gonna have to, we gonna have to have a conversation, sis. Little sis, you gonna have to come to the front. This, this, this here is getting out of hand. I'm more upset with Noel than I am with Summer at Summer's house, Martha's Vineyard. Okay, my name is Shana. If you're new here, <laughs> thank you for stopping by. Be sure to hit the subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Check out my other content. I do TV show reviews like this one. This is for Summer House Marcus Vineyard Season 2, Episode 6, A Perfect Summer Storm. This is a, a summer storm indeed. Y'all, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first things first is when did they get an intro song? Like, I... <laughs> Why y'all wait until the end? Like we almost at the end of season two. What it has this been here and I just missed it, or I don't know. Anywho, <laughs> so we start off with summer. This is a summer heavy summer house episode. Summer is on the phone with her nana, her grandmother, who's ill. Uh, she explained, give us we get a little background. Now the background was touching indeed, but does it excuse her behavior? No, so she's still gonna have to get this lashing, okay? Um, she said her grandmother adopted her because her biological mother struggled with addiction. Uh, and the man she thought was her father, she didn't know this man, she thought all her life this was her father. She reached out to him, come to find out he wasn't her father, and her mother doesn't know who her father is. So that's a piece of her, that's a part of her, that's half of her that she will never know. Ooh, oh, my God. I got I to cough. Hold on, y'all. I ain't want to cough in y'all ear. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> but this does remind me of an episode I saw on Paternity Court. I wish they would bring that show back. That was my show, okay? That's neither here nor there. Now, I can empathize with Summer because that's a lot. Like I said, that's heavy. You know, a piece of you is missing. You can't even get the answers. You don't even know where to begin because your mother don't even know who the man is. So I understand, you know, her feeling different emotions and maybe not even knowing how to feel. She should process that somewhere else. She shouldn't be here. She should not be processing that in this summer house with all this liquor on camera. Okay. It's online. It's on TV. It's out there forever now. She should have been uh, on somebody's couch hashing out her emotions and, and processing this in the right and healthy way. But whatever. Summer says um, she doesn't feel safe sharing what she's going through with her friends. Are those even really your friends if you don't feel safe sharing? I mean, I, I guess. But every time she drinks, she like unloads on people. She goes off every time she has a little drinky drink. So it comes out whether you like it or not. And then when you explode, everybody like, what's going on? What's wrong with her? It's probably better to talk to somebody or just maybe this is this is a summer you should have sat this one out. Okay. But she's here now. We got to deal with it. So per usual, I see Amir cooking. It's couples weekend and Preston is throwing a cocktail hour. And we will follow that up with Jordan throwing a freak nick party. The significant others are arriving. For Simon, Bria's boyfriend arrives. And then Donald, that's Preston's man. And, you know, later on, I'm your girlfriend will come, but child, we don't care about that. Congratulations to Preston. I heard that he and Donald are now engaged. So congratulations to the newly engaged couple. During this time, they were um, about to move in together. So lots of progress, steps being made. Okay. Shout out to Preston. Congratulations to you. Now, I feel for Jasmine with all these couples here. She's the one that's pregnant and Silas isn't here. So I did feel for her having to go through that and then see these other couples. And she's, you know, ultimately she's there alone. So I'm so glad that her friend Mariah is coming. Uh, Br Bria asked Preston for permission to invite Phil. I understand that he's throwing the day party, but enough is enough already. Like, what? He, he did a number two in Nick's bathroom. Nick is the one that deserves all this energy and all these apologies. That's the one who needs that energy. He already done talked to Preston. 
but whatever, I digress. So um, Preston said he don't care, like he ain't about to accept no invitation, but Bria can invite him if she won't. And that's exactly what she wants to do. And I don't know, it, it kind of, I don't know if Bria got a little crush on Phil or what's going on. But anyway, she FaceTimes him to tell him he can come and he can bring his little friend Mariah. And Phil was like, Mariah was coming anyway. Like we was already on the way there. Like we in the car right now. And he shows Mariah. <laughs> and Bria was like, oh, okay, awkward. Is Mariah and Phil dating? Didn't they meet for the first time last year? I don't know. I think aesthetically, they look good together. They're both tall and attractive. Um, shout out to Team Tall. I just had to throw that in there. Anyway, it, it just looks good. It looks right, you know? But uh, we don't know. I wish we could have seen more of them and less of some other people. So Amir is pressed to introduce his girlfriend to the ladies and literally anybody. No one's interested. So in his confessional, he going to lie and say some of the women expressed interest in him last year. Literally none of the women were interested in him last summer. Like, what are you talking about? The only thing you have to go off is, is Shanice took off her top. We all done seen those, those tig old bitties now, by now. Like, so, so what? There's nothing special, nothing new. Like, it wasn't just for you and your eyes only. Like, she wasn't throwing herself at you. I, child, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, sir. Nobody was interested at all. Your girlfriend has nothing to worry about. So at the event, uh, Noelle is talking about Freak Nick. But she done called it Freak Nick. And then they Freak Nick, Freak a Leak, child. I don't know what's going on. with How, how y'all tear up a name like this? It's a whole Hulu special. So Phil and Mariah arrived, and the girls and boys was shooketh, okay? They were shaking in their boots. They said, like, who they here? Oh, my goodness. Here, there they go. In their confessionals, Nick is speaking as if he's better than Phil. Like, oh, I've been here. I go to these expensive, exquisite places. And, you know, how he hate from the outside of the club. He can't even get in. Like, I done been to Paris and South Africa and here, there, and everywhere. You know, I don't know the president. And it's like, sir, don't nobody care. You are, stop, like, the way you talking down on him to prove your point, like, it just says more about you than it does about him. Now, I know Phil was trifling, but enough already. So, Bria claims she's unbothered. She don't care if Mariah there. Well, girl, you were singing a different tune when y'all talked, but okay, we'll get there. So Amir doesn't feel that he owes Mariah an apology. He said Mariah texted him after she saw the show and saw that he was the reason for the fight. And he don't feel like he should have to apologize because she they got into an altercation and was physical, barely. Amir, you so raggedy for that. And this is why, <laughs> that's just one of the reasons why I kind of want him off the show. I just don't really want him there no more, personally. But uh, he should have apologized because it was his fault. He didn't take no accountability no ownership of it, no nothing. I didn't like it. So Mariah and Bria chat, and that big bad energy that Bria had and disappeared. All this, oh, she don't want to see me. And I, girl, goodbye. So Natalie is over there emasculating my man in front of everybody, telling him that you know she the one who put him on with her real estate agency, and she makes what he makes in a year in one month. And why would you let everybody know that you make way more money than your man? Like. What are you trying to do here? Like, I, I uh, ugh. her energy is just, the vibe is off. So Phil apologizes to the fellas. To me, it felt like he was just saying sorry. And it was a little sincere, just because he wanted to be on TV. Like, he wanted them to let it go. I hope we do let it go, though, because I'm tired of talking about it. Enough is enough already. He was blamed on alcohol, everything else. He clearly seemed like, you know, he might have been under the influence last summer. I just want to move on from this. I'm tired of talking about it. So everyone's getting ready for the Freak Nick party. And Jordan, like I said, is the host. And she looks great, okay? She she did that, okay? She did her thing, okay, from the hair down. And that's, I said a few reviews back when she was talking about her alopecia, that I think she should just get a short little pixie cut. And now seeing her with the short wig, it shows that a pixie cut would really fit her. I think she should try it. Uh, that way she can feel comfortable in her skin. And, you know, especially with pixie cuts, there's ways that they can hide 
her the issues where she's having like around her hairline she's having issues and thinning they can hide them from the pixie cut she can feel comfortable having her natural hair out if she wants to and if she wants to put a wig on girl you don't got to worry about braiding your hair down or none of that just plop it on top and keep going so and mariah also looked good she had uh, a nice little 27 piece as well love to see it everybody looked good for the most part um you know, Jasmine, I don't know what she had on child. I thought that was something she probably was going to wear to bed, but she pregnant, so I'm going to let her go. The guys look fine, but Nick, of course, took the cake, okay? He had the win, like, and the award goes to Nick, honey, because Alex had the fake tattoos, too, but he wasn't really... Something about when Nick stepped on the scene, it was like, wait, it didn't even look like Nick, like... They, Noel said that's Nicavelli, and that's what we're gonna call him every time he, he come out looking like that, okay? But Shanice is like, oh, you know, I'm, you know, it's waterfalls down there. I'm about to sleep with Nick tonight. And then she's like, and then he in her confessional, she's like, once he started talking, she like, wait a minute, there go Nick, never mind. But she kept saying that, like, I'm effing Nick tonight, I want to sleep with Nick tonight. Like, girl, get a we need more single men in the house. At this time, he still had a girlfriend like, girl, uh, have you no shame, no pride, no dignity, no coof? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Like, the first time I was like, ah, he, he didn't like after the hundredth time. I'm like, girl, please get a grip. But uh, Amir, he had to come out late and by himself because his anti-social girlfriend didn't want to be around those black folks or something like that in my opinion, okay? She was finding any, they was laughing and having fun as they should be. They about to party. She like, I don't want to be around now. I can't be around. Why are you here? Ugh. So Amir and uh, Natalie, they finally come out and they in the hot tub in the group. Everybody was asking them like, well, what's next for y'all? What's next in y'all relationship? Natalie mentioning career goals. He's talking about he want to propose. He will, Hopefully engagement is on the menu. This ain't going to last. Y'all don't even have the same goals aligned. Y'all are not like-minded. Y'all don't even want the same things. They moved in together after two months. Two months too soon. I know every now and then there's an exception to the rule, and sometimes it works. Most times it don't. Yo, what are y'all even talking about? When she's not emasculating you and putting you down and belittling you, y'all ain't talking about future goals, clearly, because she's talking about career goals, and you talking about getting married. Uh, they play Never Have I Ever, and Noelle has a game all wrong. There's always one. It happens all the time. So, you know, we're supposed to with Never Have I Ever. You're supposed to say something that um, you've never done, and who, if somebody's done it, they got to take the drink. So she was like, Never Have I Ever given Felicio. And everybody was like, what? Who? Uh-huh. Milo was looking like, what you say, girl? Hmm? What? Huh? I can't believe. She's lying. <laughs> she was like, oh, wait, no, I have done that. So everybody's like, oh, no, girl, you got it wrong. Like, you're supposed to say. And while they explain it to her, Summer gets pissed off at Noelle. She's taking her frustrations on her. She's like, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. And everybody's like, calm down. She knows now. Like, it's not that deep. So then Bria was like, I forgot what she said, but she started taking her, her anger out on Bria. And it was like, girl, somebody get her an Uber and get her on back home. Okay, what's going on? So then Alex is at the kitchen, at the dirty kitchen sink, washing his tattoos off. Who cares? I don't clean the kitchen anyway. She like, we got four other bathrooms. Why would you do it right here? What what now you now now you the cleanliness police? Girl, please. So then Summer gets mad at Noelle because she goes in um, Shanice's room and Bria and Noelle and Shanice was in there, you know, having fun and laughing like you're supposed to. Bria actually didn't get on my nerves this entire episode. Wow. But anywho, <laughs> so while uh, Summer and Bria are talking once again, I thought they had already made up from when Summer lashed out at Bria at the hot tub. And now they're talking about it again. And Bria's like, what are we talking about? Why are they talking about that? Shanice and Noel, uh, yeah, Shanice and Noel was taking pictures as Noel had on somebody's wig and they were just being silly and, you know, having fun, not paying attention to what they were talking about. And so they started laughing 
and Summer snaps and she's like, no, no. You just have fun with your friends and she's all dramatic. And Noelle chases behind her. This first time. She chased behind her 511 times. She ran behind her so, so many times. I don't know. Is she your first friend that you ever had? And like, why? What? Why are you chasing behind her like this? And I feel like somebody keep doing stuff because she liked that Noelle chased after her. Like, I, I hate it. It makes my skin crawl. Like, I hate how Noelle is chasing after her. Like, girl. You need to figure out what that's about. Why, why are you doing that? What's going on with that? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So she chases behind her. And then they was like, she was like, no, no, no. And then everybody who was downstairs was looking like, what's going on? We don't want nothing to do with that. So they was like, let's just go back up to Shani's room and talk about it. So then uh, Bria and Summer start arguing again. And Summer's crying. Everybody, and Bria's like, girl, what's wrong with you? Like, so Noelle's trying to calm her down and trying to hug her and console her. And Summer pushes Noelle. That is where you lost me for good. That's where you lost me for good. It was a little shove, okay? It wasn't like that aggressive push that we saw on the Never Have I Ever Met You Before. If y'all watch that show, uh, I did a review on that. Be sure to check it out in case you missed it. But uh, anyway, back to this. So she pushed Noel, and instead of Noel being like, "Girl, I know you lost your mind," okay, <laughs> she didn't check her, didn't gather her, did nothing, didn't get to tussling, tongue tussling, nothing. Noel chases because someone was like, "See, Bria, I pushed Noel. Are you happy now?" Like what? And so Summer storms out on like a tornado through the house. And Noel's chasing behind her. No, Summer, no, Summer. No, please, Summer, come back, Summer. No, Summer, don't go, Summer. No, please, no. I don't, huh, who, what will I do? If you leave, please don't go. <sighs> what? I know Noel got some daddy issues or something, but this is, girl, this is crazy. This is crazy. When Summer gets up off the couch, Noel needs to make another, an appointment and come right behind her and get on it. Because why? Summer is not your friend. Summer is not your friend. Stop. <laughs> Don't chase behind nobody like this. She need to call her mama back on the phone so somebody can get her together. Because, girl, and then from what I heard, it didn't sound like your mother raised you to be like this. Stop it. Let her go. Because Bria's like, I ain't chasing behind her, girl. Bye. Let her go. Let her go and, and, and figure it out. She ain't telling nobody what's going on. Nobody knows. You don't get to push people and then be like, oh, I'm going through a lot. You don't get to do that because you're going through a lot. Everybody in the house seems like they're going through something. That's not fair that you just get to get away because you're going through something. Stop it. If you can't handle your emotions, you need to go home. I feel for her situation, but she needs to go. And I may need to go too because I'm just, uh, I don't know, it just... I know he's the only one that cook and clean, but this is that girlfriend. Just goodbye. Okay, goodbye. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. Sorry it's late. I'll do better next week, okay? I promise. I will see you in the next one. Bye.